In this video, you will learn to bend tubing using the Swage Lock Manual Bench Top Tube Bender. You will need these components to assemble the bench top bender. Swage Lock Goniometer or other suitable measuring device. Hand crank. Bend shoe. Roller bracket lever. G roller and G roller pin. D roller and D roller pin. Roller bracket assembly. To protect yourself from injury, be sure to wear safety glasses and gloves. While using the bender, be sure to keep hands away from pinch points. To set up the benchtop bender, place the hand crank on the high bend speed selector. Rotate the hand crank until the zero reference mark on the hex drive shaft is between the 2 and 3 o'clock position when viewed from the operating position. Rotate the roller knob counterclockwise until it cannot be further rotated. Place the appropriate bend shoe on the hex drive shaft, aligning the zero reference marks on the shoe and the shaft. The bend shoe must be fully bottomed on the hex drive shaft. Install the roller bracket assembly on the bracket post. The roller bracket assembly stop must be to the right of the bracket post stop. Place the roller bracket lever on the bracket pin. Be sure that the lever is fully bottomed on the pin. Lift the roller pins. Place the appropriate G and D rollers in the marked locations on the roller bracket and replace the roller pins. The bottom of the roller pins has a flat ground into it and must be fully engaged with the roller bracket assembly. Turn the roller pins until they engage. Now that you have set up the bender, prepare to bend the tube. If you have not done so already, prepare the bend layout. Refer to the Swage Lock Benchtop Tube Bender User's Manual MS-13-145 for more information on the bend layout. Mark the tube according to the bend layout. Carefully insert the tube into the bend shoe, past the clamp arm. The end of the tube must extend past the right edge of the clamp arm to prevent potential damage to the tube during bending. Align the bend mark on the tube with the reference mark on the bend shoe. Turn the roller bracket lever clockwise until the roller bracket assembly stop makes contact with the bracket post stop. Hold the tube and turn the roller knob clockwise until the G and D rollers both make contact with the tube and the roller knob is tight. You may need to guide the rollers onto smaller diameter tubing. Ensure there is approximately 3 8 inch or 10 millimeter clearance between the D roller and the clamp arm of the bend shoe. You can place a piece of white paper underneath the rollers to help see the gap. To increase clearance, rotate the roller knob counterclockwise while slowly rotating the hand crank clockwise and keeping the tube straight. Note that turning the hand crank too quickly will cause the tube to bend. To decrease clearance, rotate the roller knob clockwise while slowly rotating the hand crank counterclockwise. Note that the roller knob must be tight. To preserve bend consistency, do not turn the roller knob after you have achieved 3 8 inch or 10 millimeter clearance. Once you have placed the tube in the bender, you must calibrate it to account for tube spring back. Spring back occurs when a material is bent from its original form. The bent tube will spring back slightly towards its original pre-bent form as the pressure exerted on it during the bending process is released. Place the hand crank on the appropriate speed selector for the tube being bent. Low bend speed selector, setting 1, is suggested for large diameter or heavy wall tube. Medium bend speed selector, setting 2, is suggested for intermediate size and medium wall tube. High bend speed selector, setting 3, is suggested for small diameter and thin wall tube. Slowly rotate the hand crank until the tube, at the right of the rollers, begins to deflect or bend. On low setting 1 and high setting 3 bend speeds, rotate the hand crank clockwise. On medium setting 2 bend speed, rotate the hand crank counterclockwise. Keep the hand crank still and rotate the bend degree wheel to zero. Do not release the hand crank while the tube is under load. Doing so may cause the hand crank to spin, possibly leading to injury. Rotate the hand crank until the bend wheel displays 5 degrees less than the desired bend angle. This will prevent setup scrap due to overbending. As an example, for a desired bend angle of 90 degrees, rotate the hand crank until the bend degree wheel reads 85 degrees. 
Unload the bender. Rotate the hand crank in the direction opposite the direction used to bend the tube. While rotating the hand crank, gently push the roller bracket lever counterclockwise until the roller swings away from the tube and the tube can be removed from the bender. Do not force the roller bracket lever. Do not turn the roller knob to unload the bender. Doing so will require you to begin the calibration process again. Use a swage lock goniometer or other suitable measuring device to measure the bend angle of the tube. Make note of this measurement because it is likely to be different than the angle displayed in the bend wheel. In this example, the angle measures 82 degrees. Reload the tube into the bender in the same direction as it was initially bent, lining up the bend mark and the reference mark on the bend shoe. At this point, the tube will be bent 5 degrees less than the desired bend. Rotate the hand crank until the bend wheel displays 5 degrees less than the desired bend angle. This is the same position at which the bending was stopped prior to removing the tube to measure the bend angle. To set the bend wheel to display the actual bend angle being produced, keep the hand crank still and rotate the bend wheel to the specified measurement. In this video, we use an example setting of 82 degrees. Continue to rotate the hand crank until the bend degree wheel reads the desired bend angle. Unload the bender and measure the bend angle in the tube. The bend angle indicated on the bend degree wheel will now be very close to the bend angle produced. If further adjustment is necessary, repeat the calibration procedure. Now that you have calibrated the tube bender, the bender is ready for operation. Use the hand crank on the high bend speed selector to return the bend shoe to the starting position, with the zero reference mark between the 2 and 3 o'clock position. To continue bending tubing, insert the tube carefully into the bend shoe. If necessary, turn the hand crank to rotate the bend shoe to allow the tube to be inserted. The end of the tube must extend past the right edge of the clamp arm to prevent potential damage to the tube during bending. Align the bend mark on the tube with the reference mark on the bend shoe. There will already be a bend in the tube at this point. Turn the roller bracket lever clockwise until the roller bracket assembly stop and the bracket post stop make contact. Do not turn the roller knob or the bend consistency will be affected. If the rollers touch the tube and prevent the stops from making contact, gently turn the roller bracket lever clockwise while rotating the hand crank. Before continuing, check that the bend mark remains aligned with the reference mark on the bend shoe, the tube is positioned in the correct plane for the bend, and the tube will not contact the bender housing during the bend operation for a multiple bend. Rotate the hand crank until you reach the desired bend angle on the bend degree wheel. On low setting 1 and high setting 3 bend speeds, rotate the hand crank clockwise to bend the tube. On medium setting 2 bend speed, rotate the hand crank counterclockwise to bend the tube. Unload the tube from the bender and verify the bend angle. Make adjustments if necessary. Use the hand crank on the high speed bend selector to return the bend shoe to the starting position. For more information, refer to the Swagelock Benchtop Tube Bender User's Manual MS-13-145 or contact your authorized Swagelock Sales and Service Center.